not one for like telling people or what not to do. And I think some people that are on that kind of vein, you have to be understanding of just how weird of a situation it is that we're in at the moment, isn't it? I have sympathy for people. If people want to break the rules and go outside and you know and risk it, more power to you, and it just don't come around me. I just you know whatever it is, what it is. I think people have been indoors for too long, um, and to expect people to kind of suddenly, you know, give up everything they know and love because of this phantom disease that they have no you know reference to i don't think that's likely so if people want to go out and you know break the rules whatever i, I don't care what can, what can i do but i thought this story was quite funny um it basically again it shows that you know people that want to get it in people that want to go out will find a way around it and people that want to get their drugs will find a way around it too it is from the guardian it says here uh drug dealers, drug dealers posing as joggers they end the nhs staff in in, in covid19 lockdown it says here, uh, drug dealers are posing as joggers or using fake NHS ID badges to continue their trade during the COVID-19 lockdown. An expert on gangs has found. It's Professor Simon Harding, director of the National Centre for Gang Research at the University of West London, said that county lands gangs were finding new ways of doing business, which is mad, isn't it? So I think county lands, I'm assuming, are those dudes that, you know, they basically operate within the county lines to take a brick from here go up to some random place up north uh post up get a trap and start flanging that work it continues it says uh many dealers were heeding government advice on physical distancing turning to social media drive-by sales or letterbox shops to avoid infection he said mad in it um I, it must be surprising that people are in a funk people are in a mood they're not really happy with the current situation they've lost their jobs they've not seen their friends or they're on furlough which is probably worse than losing your job probably right the idea that you're just at home not doing anything um and especially if you've got fear that you might get sacked later on being in that kind of employment purgatory is no fun so imagine all that stuff going on right you might have not seen especially if you're close to, you're really close to your family you're not seeing them or close to your friends you're not seeing them or just imagine if you're one of the people who had you were living in a flat share and all of a sudden you have to move back home like and that's not even in the uk that's in another country with your parents you haven't seen or heard from in a couple of years and siblings that have all grown up it's just a weird dynamic you have to suddenly go back home now so i think that must be weird so people are definitely going to turn to because i remember seeing a stat about um frozen food sales have gone up during the coronavirus lockdown so as alcohol sales and i'd imagine drugs as well right because people just want to you know there's only so much netflix only so much youtube only so many books you can read until you just want large chunks of the day to just zip on by which now makes me understand why people got addicted to xanax remember there was a period in time where xanax was the thing where right? everyone was popping xanax and everyone was and the people that weren't doing it were like oh, i can't believe people do that look how it makes you look you look all munged out people get hooked on it really quickly but for the user because most drugs in it there's not i don't think there's a drug that exists maybe even weed there's no drug that exists that is enjoyable for the person that's not doing it doesn't right <clears throat> doesn't exist even alcohol you you know if you're not drinking and you're around people that are drinking it's like pfft, it's maybe one of the most annoying things it's probably up there with a gag you know friday night on little bushy station that gaggle of you know a horde of women who sound like a gaggle of geese parading around little bushy station complimenting each other's outfits pretending to fall over whilst they carry the little cans of you know mns uh alcohol pops they're probably a close second but number one number one that is up there with how you know just oh, up there is super annoying but anyway what can you do let's continue um so uh but some have dressed as joggers to avoid police detection while others have made nhs fake badges to continue street dealing the quote says here on one hand they really are heeding they really are heeding government advice on social distancing but at the same time it's a business as usual as people were panic buying food dealers were running bulk deals and selling lockdown party packs which is odd isn't it because i think when you've got high once at home if you've ever been high once at home especially in the party mood and you've you've done it more than once maybe twice three times four times you have to come to the realization that there's nothing like getting on it when you're outdoors indoors is like what's the point in it really and it? it's like i don't know maybe weed is different but party pack sort of stuff you kind of need to at least have a bit of an outside experience and then if you come back from an after it's fair enough but just doing your whole thing indoors at home is super dead unless you, i don't know you've got some sort of like basement discotheque or something it doesn't really bang the same i'd imagine even i would imagine even worse nowadays because you're not necessarily because i don't know maybe it's just me but it's like i'm not a birthday person right 
but I'd imagine the worst time to celebrate your birthday is when you're in a bad mood, isn't it? Like everything just is bad, right? You don't necessarily feel in a good way. You don't feel like uh, having fun. So I imagine the same thing would work. The same thing would apply if you are doing drugs at home. Like it's not the most, it's no, unless you, unless you, unless you work in a job that you actually hate and they decide to furlough you. So you're getting paid and you have loads of cool, fun housemates to chill with, right? Or like a nice cool family they like hanging out with. That's the only time I think those pie packs would make more sense because then every Friday you and your friends or every day is a Friday, essentially, you could turn it into like a little mini house rave, right? But how off, how long will that last? Like it, it will get dead after a while. I don't know. Maybe it's me, but I just never got the idea. I just never got where I'd sitting at home doing drugs was fun. It's not fun. You just do it because you want to do it, but I don't think it's fun. It can never replace going out, right? Because part of the reason, part of the ecstasy, part of the uh, thrill of going out is seeing other people. You know, the lights, the bass, the queuing up outside. You know, getting searched, the cloakroom, all that stuff is adds to the actual um, night and then when you sprinkle on some class A's or B's it might just take it to another level but to just do the entire rave at home not for me boss it continues um, the article says here vehicles have been used more often to carry out deals arranged by the firm with products thrown from windows and money chucked on the backseat to keep the items clean that is a madness Harding said that the lockdown and travel restrictions were affecting the country lines um, gang model in which the young vulnerable people were being used as couriers to move drugs and cash between cities and smaller towns I don't think it's only young and vulnerable people I think ev everyone does county lines they're making it seem as if like it's like a child sex ring or something operating on there but hey the new tactics have been led to a reduction in cuckooing what's that what's that mean cuckooing 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 whereby gang members take uh care over the home of vulnerable person to cut sort and deal drugs because it's seen as too risky for health okay Sending good young adults out to South End on sea by train to carry drugs is too risky now. So increasingly, dealers are driving runners around or hiring local people to do the job. Street gangs are being forced to find new tactics such as shifting grooming and recruiting online to social media. This means young people can become ensnared in dangerous gang activity from their phones while their families have no idea what's worrying. Oh, shut up. Last month, the National Crime Agency Director Lynn Owen said prices were rising because fewer drugs were entering the UK, which is definitely true. I think that's probably that probably has more sense in it. I don't think you're going to stop. How, how are they going to what? They're going to start arresting. You know, the government's already on a bad. In a, the government's already doing things. You know, badly here in the UK. They the last thing you want is more eyes on you. When you start pushing, you know, up some local nurse against the wall and searching her pockets because you think she might be carrying a couple of bricks, that isn't the right way to go about things. I'd imagine again, who, what do I know? Uh, but yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, off the back of this uh, lockdown, people are out there getting in. Um, they're out there making sure that they get their party packs and their raving dolls, which I think is, you know, the epitome of sad. But hey, people have their way of doing things.